This JUnit test case looks complicated. So what's the best way to help you understand it more thoroughly? Well, we trace it on both the debugger and the paper and see the correspondence. But I think for this uh, session here, I would like to focus more on visualizing uh, the object creation and also mut mutated method call, excessive method call on the paper. But for the debugger, I want to show you something that I uh, mentioned before, which is about how to use the step, uh, step return to actually go through only specific breakpoints uh, inside your code. Let's now do it. I want to put uh, various breakpoints in the following way. Number one, I want to put it over here in the first line, right before we try, uh, I try, uh, right before we create an empty uh, refurbished store. Number one. Number two, I want to put a breakpoint right before we actually add the first uh, entry, right before, okay? And the second uh, and the third breakpoint we want to put will be right before we add the second uh, entry over here. And the last breakpoint I want to put it will be right after we actually um, add the, uh, the last entry, entry number three, okay? So we got a various breakpoint you want to put, okay? Number one over here, Number two over here, number three over here, and number four over here. So these four breakpoints. So please make sure you put them, and then let's now launch the debugger and see, uh, especially from the expressions uh, panel, how things will actually change. I want to focus more on a high level view rather than stepping into. Let's now launch the debugger over here. You can click on the back button here, or you can right click on test refurbished store, and then you can say debug as unit test. Okay, that's what we will do. All right, and then I will switch the uh, perspective to Java. Okay, and let me now under expressions, I would like to remove all the previous expression, right? You can uh, click on the double cross over here. I just remove them, just cl uh, cl uh, make it clearer. Okay, under variables, we have nothing here, which is normal. So now I want to say, I want to skip everything over here and go all the way to right before we execute uh, the addition of the uh, first entry, meaning that the store is still empty, right? That's what, what I want to do. So the way to do it is by saying step return. As soon as I say step return, what I'm gonna have is I have now RS over here. You can see under RS, we actually got NOE, zero, no entries uh, have been added just yet, maximum capacity five, and also the entries array whose size should always be five. And you can see all now, over here, one, two, three, four, five, right? That's kind of the variables you can explore. Uh, there should be no surprise. On the other hand, I want to focus on the expressions over here, especially I want to see the return values of two uh, arrays. One would be, let's say rs dot get private entries array. So that's one of the return value. And you can see currently, if you expand it, you simply got all nouns over here. Okay. On the other hand, I will also get rs.get entries. That's just another one. You can see this one here is simply just empty. If you click on that, you can see it's uh, simply empty, nothing inside. Okay. I really want to compare the values between these two arrays as we are adding entries. So that will confirm what I actually said verbally in the earlier video. Okay. So now I want to simply say step over. So uh, if I say step over, we're gonna add in the first entry into it, which is E1, right? If I say step over like that, so you can see now if I click on the, the return value for this, right? So you can see here uh, from private entries array, the first slot will just be uh, some entry over here. Specifically, what would that, uh, what would be its address, okay? I want to say, for example, if I simply put E1 over here, you can see, E1 is the entry with ID 60. And then as index zero is also the entry with uh, ID 60. When I visualize it, you also see the aliasing. Okay, I just want to point it out. What about RS get entries over here? Similar, you can see that's also an array that's not empty. And then you can see that's also the entry of uh, also ID 60, you can see here, right? If you like, I'll show you once. You can say rs.get private entries array over here at position zero. So I'm really referring to this particular slot, right? And that one should have the same address. So using the relational operator as E1. So that would be true. Similarly, if I say rs.get entries, 
okay and then at position zero over here so i'm referring to the index zero over here right for the get entries array and then that one should also be equal to e1 right so that's also true so by the transitivity of a relate uh, of equality so i would know that uh let me just write it down for completeness rs.get private entries array over here at position zero equals equals rs dot get entries at position zero oops beg your pardon so this should be zero over here rather than dash right that's also true right so that's something you should really also try to do uh for the later breakpoints i'm just doing that once for you all right okay so so far so good so far nothing surprising okay you can see this is really corresponding to this right so now the next one I want to step out to is over here, right before we actually uh, execute uh, the uh, uh, adding the entry to, right? So if I say step return, so now um, we are now here. We're still the uh, we're still the same uh, the same states. So it's right before we add a, a second entry. Okay, what's gonna happen if I say step over over here? Well, if I say that this particular entry will be added, right? Especially for P two, that's the products, right? Uh, the associate the associated product for this new entry if i say step over over here so now you can see this one doesn't change slot number zero slot number one is actually an entry where the products is the product object with id 94. so just for comp uh, confirmation you can see p2 over here you want to take a guess what's the id for p2 i bet it should be 94. there we go it's 94 right because we got aliasing over there and similarly, if you see uh, from get entries array over here, in this case, the second entry that we have collected over here, so the product is also 94. You can see we got 94 here, 94 here, and also we got 94 over here. You can also try to write down the relational operations to make sure these addresses are the same. I'll leave that as, a, uh, as an exercise for you, pretty much like how we did it over here, all right? Okay, very good. And then let's say we are here and let's say step return. If we say step return, we're going to go to here right before we add the third entry, the last one, right? As soon as I say that, if I say step over over here, you can see now we got three entries. You can see under private entries array, we got zero, one, and two, right? And you can see three and four, they're still nulls. On the other hand, for get entries over here, it only returns the non null entry. So that's why it only got 0, 1, and 2. And the 0, 1, and 2 over here kind of correspond to 0, 1, and 2 over here. But they're different arrays, right? I'll try to visualize this as well. But I just want to point out the high level difference. All right. So uh, one thing you can also double check. You can, how about the serial number, for example? If you see uh, the third entry here, the serial number is exactly 7YM, 7YM. And what about the uh, products? The product here, you can see that's uh, iPad Pro over here, 10.5. You can see that as well, right? And also for the uh, finish, we didn't set it up, right? Remember this version of the uh, 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 the constructor internally wouldn't set up the uh, attribute value. It will be default, right? You can set it up if you wish. Uh, I'll leave that to you. Okay, similarly, if you see here, the third entry over here under get entries, it will be the same. Okay, you can see products over here, and the product is actually 171. Uh, actually, the address here is not important. I want to focus more on the serial number, 7YM. You can see the same serial number. What about products over here? You can see that's the uh, iPad Pro 10.5, and also we also got iPad Pro 10.5 over here, right? So they really match. All right, so play with the debugger a little bit more by yourself. I just want to highlight to you what, how you can, at least what you can do. And then you can definitely try to step into the method call if you wish. I'll leave that to you, okay? What I want to do now, first of all, let me stop the debugger, okay? And then go back to Java perspective, okay? Now back to the editor. What I would like to do now is to uh, trace uh, the object creations and, uh, and method calls visually on my iPad.